All right, and here we go. My audience members, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So my five topics that I'm going to talk about, hearing versus listening, uh, listening barriers, including self barriers, information processing barriers, context barriers, and improvising your listening skills. So let's go ahead and start at the top. Um, hearing is a physiological process uh, in which sound waves travel through the air to your eardrums um, and and make noises. It's, it's the process of hearing noises. Listening is uh, a psychological process. It's the process of making sense of the noises that come into your ears. So listening involves five activities. Those activities are selecting, attending, understanding, remembering, and responding. So when we talk about selecting, uh, what we're talking about is selecting the material out of the myriad of noises that are coming at you at any given moment, you select what you want to listen to. So, like, for example, right now, all of you are selecting to listen to what I'm saying rather than the kids in the bedroom back there. Um, attending is your, your ability to choose to pay attention. So you're gonna, you're, it's your choice to pay attention to what I'm saying. Uh, understanding is obviously making sense of the words as they come to you. Remembering and responding uh, involves, you know, uh, responding to the, to the speaker in a manner that's appropriate. So our ability to listen and retain information is limited. Uh, reten as far as your retention goes, one day after hearing something, uh, typically most people retain only about 50% of the information that was given to them. Two days after we listen, we lose another, an additional 50%. So uh, ultimately what that, what, what that boils down to is that after, after two days, you only re typically remember about 75% of the information that you hear. Um, compounding that problem are listening bar barriers. Some of those barriers are self-imposed, some of them are logistical, and some of them are environmental. So let's start with the self-imposed listening barriers. Um, your self-focus. What that means is at any given point while you're listening to someone speak, you're focusing on your internal conversation with yourself. So you may be wondering, how long do, is this class going to last? What am I going to make for dinner tonight? Um, you know, uh, if you're running late, you're thinking about what time, how am I going to organize picking up all the kids on time? Um, another self-barrier is emotional noise. So emotional noise is talking about uh, your emotional response to either words or topics um, or, or the emotional state of the speaker. So there are, there, are, there are certain words out there. For example, if you grow up in a household where four-letter words were not typically used, a speaker who chooses to use those words uh, can typically evoke some sort of emotional arousal out of you. And um, As far as topics, maybe... Maybe there are hot button topics, things that people are not necessarily comfortable discussing. Things like, you know, uh, divorce or abortion or politics, religion, things like that. All those things can trigger an emotional response in the listener, and that emotional noise can interfere with your ability to hear and process information. Um, some information processing barriers. So these relate to more. Rather than, rather than internal conflict, these relate to more along the lines of how quickly you can process information. Um, your processing rate refers to most people speak at about 125 words a minute, whereas most people can think anywhere between 600 <coughs> to 800 words a minute. Um, information overload refers to information coming at you from various sources throughout the workday, maybe. Your, uh, your cell phone is ringing, your pager is going off, your fax machine is sending things in all the time. So the amount of information that is coming to you at any given time can affect your ability to hear things. Um, receiver apprehension. Receiver apprehension is about the receiver of the message 
um, being fearful of maybe misunderstanding it or not understanding the information. So that can in, that can affect um, your ability to to collect and retain the information. Um, shifting attention. It's suggested that gender plays a role in this. Um, typically, men will lock on to a message, whereas women are more adept at shifting their attention between a couple of things. Um, cultural differences, typically North American culture is centered on the speaker, and so if you're trying to improve communication skills, um, the focus goes on the speaker and a better way of delivering those the information that they're trying to pass on, rather than, rather than uh, the focus being on the listener. Some contextual barriers would be noise. If you're in an, envi in an environment where there's a lot of noise in the background and you're having trouble hearing, um, barriers of time or place. Um, this refers to uh, maybe you're trying to maybe you're trying to speak to somebody in a situation where there's a lot going on around them. So you guys you guys could move to a different location um, to to have a more productive session as far as communicating. Um, there are some things that you can do to improve your listening skills. Number one, stop what you're doing. That means turning off the television, turning off your computer, stopping whatever, whatever activity you're in the middle of, looking at the person that's speaking. Uh, so, you, so you're choosing to select and, and really focus on, on the person that's talking and listen. Um, turning off competing messages is important. So for example, if you have kids in the room, those kids are, you know, pulling at your coat sleeves and you're trying to listen, you can send the kids away. Um, listening with your eyes, paying that means paying attention and focusing on the people that you're trying to listen to. You can move to a different location. Um, you can avoid insulated listening. And what that means is avoid listening with a bias. So if you already have an opinion about a subject, um, try to try to avoid having your opinion overtake everything that comes in that comes from the speaker. You know, try and try and be a little bit more of a an analytical listener. Um, you can also try to avoid pseudo listening. Pseudo listening is where you're watching television or doing something on your computer, and yes, yes, I'm listening, and the speaker is trying to get your attention. So that's it. Good.